Hey everybody, what's going on? Rob Sesternino here, and we have our final three exit interviews, plus America's favorite player here on this Big Brother 22 uh, post-finale special. And I'm here with a man who will switch from being the person, the, the eye in the sky, the onlooker, all these people, to the person asking some questions. Taryn Armstrong, Taryn, how are you? I'm doing very, uh, very well. Very excited to talk to some of these people, get some answers out of them, uh, and, and hear what they have to say. Is it weird for you that when the people that you have been watching for a long time then talk back to you? I think it was probably weird when I started doing this, but I, I'm, I'm kind of used to it now. Okay. Yeah, I feel like you know, you've gone all this season, you know, 85 days or whatever, what, you know, watching them. And then when they are able to, like, respond to your questions, you know, might be, uh, like, disconcerting. Well, it's it, like I said, like it's it's like uh, I feel like I've I know them well enough. Like, that, wait, like, you can hear me now? I, well, like I I feel like I know how they will respond to the questions that I ask them. So I, it's it's almost like I'm more comfortable with them than like some random new person. Okay, we will hear from Cody. Enzo, Nicole, and Devon here in this podcast. Uh, earlier tonight, we had our big finale recap, which is up at robhasawebsite.com. We went into everything from Cody's win and everything that happened in this two-hour finale, and it was a fun show. Very fun show. Uh, the, the finales are, are usually fun, but I feel like they're especially fun when it's a good finale, and I do feel like this was a good finale. All right, well, let's talk to the man who is the person at the center of this finale, and that would be none other than Cody Calafiore, our first interview of the night. Uh, here is Cody. All right, we're here with to the champion of Big Brother 22. I'm sure it does uh, not get old to hear it. Here he is, Cody Calafiore. Cody, how are you? Oh, no, what's happening? Cody, congratulations, and let me just uh, be the first to say thank you for helping me win a draft this season. <laughs> no thank way. you. No yeah. way. We nailed it. We did it, Cody. Did me in the beginning? Yeah. Oh, my God. We're bonded for life now. I yeah. Like that was just a huge bond. We got this. Uh, so, uh, Watch Cody. Out. He's going to cut you, Rob. <laughs> no, no, no. This is what he does. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but Cody, uh, that big decision tonight, so emotional between taking either Enzo or Nicole. Just how close was it for you? Oh my God. I can't even tell you. I, I feel like I can't really express it. Like, I feel like their emotions in the moment also like reflected like what it was to the, like, cause him, like him getting the way that he was, was because like our relationship was very similar to mine and Nicole's like we were together from the second day as well like I came in and we clicked I came in with Nicole we just had something and then ours grew I felt like Nicole and I's like relationship like really like blossomed into something incredible and so for me like to be there that was the hardest decision to have to pick like between it's like picking between two of your best friends two people that you wouldn't be there without how do I decide like who is going to come there with me and it was very tough. Ultimately, it kind of came down to like Nicole had won the game before. She was a winner. And, and I've gone through a ton of scenarios of like Nicole wins the final HOH, takes me. How, how does she do? I win the final HOH, take her. How, do, how does she do? How do I do? I win the final HOH, take Enzo. What, what happens there? And so like I just felt I didn't want to take somebody and lose again. I didn't want to do that. That would have haunted me way worse than the first time. And so that was a daunting decision, but that was like dwelling on me for, for a while. Cause I was like, what if we are at the end of the game? Like if Enzo wasn't there, I was taking Nicole every time. Mm -hmm. If Enzo wasn't there, I wouldn't, I would not have cut her. Um, if anybody else was sitting there, it would have been Nicole and I, if no, if Nicole wasn't sitting there and Enzo was there, I would have taken him every time, but it was always kind of for me, Enzo, then Nicole, um, in that process of, if I'm taking somebody to final two. So that's, I just stuck with it. Yeah. Uh, you, you started the game very strong. Uh, did you have any, uh, any, any plans coming into the game? Uh, you did, you know, you did come into the game. You knew a couple of the people in there. Uh, yeah. did you have anything planned out? Um, so what I heard a lot of names coming up previously because I feel like people couldn't wait to talk about, Oh, I got asked the all-stars. And I feel like it was a little bit of an ego thing. I didn't want anybody to know I was getting called. I didn't want anybody to know I was going. Cause I didn't want people to be like, Cody, Oh my God, he's probably talking to Derek. Like, 
well, he's probably getting strategy from Derek. This could be a bigger target. Like, I don't know, like what, Cody social game. Like I didn't want people to go in to see, like I went into sequester and was like, I want to watch as much big brother as I can from some of the names that I heard. And so I was watching people and studying different things that people were doing. And I didn't want my name to be part of that. And so, yeah, like there was a strategy aspect to it because I was like, you guys opened your mouth and like, why would you want people knowing that you were going? And I didn't want people knowing I was going. And so when I came in and I, some of the faces I saw really solidified for me, I was like, I didn't want to win the first HOH, but when I saw people and I saw I was in the position, I was like, I'm winning the first HOH because I feel like there's a lot of names that I heard and I don't know if these people are really tight. And so I wanted to get my own relationships and I felt like the best opportunity for that was winning the HOH solidifying relationships myself, giving myself that first week of like, oh, you know what? I may have had something outside previously, but now I feel tight with Cody. I think I'm going to stay true to that. And so for me, that was my strategy coming in and not necessarily like, I didn't care to reach out and like talk to people. I didn't want people knowing that I was going on. Going back to the decision tonight to not tell Enzo that you were going to take him, was any part of that so that Enzo couldn't prepare what he was going to say for the final two speeches? Oh, my God. Um, it's going to sound bad. I. It's not even as Enzo, I felt like, thought I was going to take 100%. But I know how like shook you get in those two seats when co questions come at you and i i had been preparing all week like i think if this question comes like i want this answer to come out i want to prepare this for my beginning and i want to prepare this for my ending and i know how much goes into that um there wasn't really that strategy to not tell him because i feel like if you ask enzo he thought all week i was going to take him so he could have prepared i just think I, maybe he just didn't. I don't know. Cause I feel like it was still up in the air. He was like, if Nicole wins, I think I'm getting cut. So why do I need to prepare? And so, um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I didn't purposely do that to shake him, but I knew like the uncertainty of whether he was going to be in the final two was definitely going to be an advantage for me. Cause I felt a little more certain. I did not feel Nicole was going to cut me. And I felt like if I won the final, I would guarantee myself there. So I was preparing all week for like questions and speeches and, I know mm -hmm. how tough that is if it's just your first time going there because yeah. I feel like I shook on my first season. He 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 was definitely hoping that you would take him, but he was also like very in his head about like I'm gonna get third place again. Um, yeah, I feel like that was weighing on him a lot. Yeah, uh, w would you be surprised to hear that uh, that he was like very heavily considering cutting you if he had won that final three HOH? Um, I think that he was never going to cut me. <laughs> I think he was never going to cut me. I, I think, I think a lot of times you have conversations. Can't believe you say oh. Enzo's all talk. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't, I just, I know Enzo in his roots, what he is. And Enzo is, is loyal. That's why you're the root. We are the root. And I thought that was one of the cool, I was like, yo, we're the root. And I love yeah, this. And then Enzo forgot I, about it. <laughs> And then, but then I kept being like, "Yo, you're not talking about it. I know you're not talking about it because I'm not talking about it. So like, what's going on? Um, but yeah, I, I think he might've been considering it, but I think Enzo being the person that he was is why, like, I was able to like, know like Memphis was somebody I had a final two with. And based on different things that were said, I was like, Memphis definitely will cut me when he gets a chance. So I knew Tyler definitely would cut me if he had the chance. So like, that's why ultimately I wanted like Enzo and Nicole there because they were two people that, through the game, I felt way more confident would take me if I slipped up and didn't win com competitions at the end. Cody, uh, who's going to give you a harder time outside of the house for cutting them? Do you think uh, Nicole or Danny? <laughs> oh, um, I think I think Nicole will give me a harder time because I think Danny, um, Danny respected the game that I played. I think Danny had a lot of respect for the game that I played and ultimately like understands the game. And, and I think I did, a, I, I explained it. I didn't want to hold anything back to her. I wanted to explain everything because I was so, so close with her. Cutting her was so difficult, but strategically I lost so much of my trust in her. And so I was like, how can I have somebody who I trust fully in Nicole and who I don't trust in Danny? Like it made it so easy for me, but, and I think she'll understand that because when I explained it to her, there were so many things that she probably can be like, Oh, okay. I get it. We're like, Personally, hopefully that makes her like, like not think about the bot because her and I had such a strong bond in that house. And so um, I think she'll understand more of the game. And I think Nicole will be more mad because it's like all game we were talking about going to the end. And then I cut her at the end. Mm -hmm. So I think it'll definitely be Nicole. It'll be harder. I'll have it a little harder on me.
Yeah. Uh, it seems like one of your more challenging weeks, and maybe you disagree, but um, when Enzo was HOH, Tyler was pushing really hard uh, to get everyone to target Danny. And it seemed yeah. like uh, like that was the week, more so than any other week, that it felt like, like oh, Cody's kind of like, maybe his control is slipping away here. Um, and it kind of felt like you were aware of that, and you were kind of like, how do I regain control? Can you walk me through your, your process? Yeah. I totally did. And I think the problem that I had in that week was I wanted to step back because Enzo had said something and was getting very frustrated with people trying to tell him stuff to do. And so I was like, okay, I took that and was like, I need to take a step back and not be that person because then it could cause him to be frustrated with me. And I feel like me stepping back allowed Tyler, who's an incredible player to like sneak in and start going after Danny and talking and mentioning stuff about Danny. And I was like, I needed Enzo to understand like Danny is not targeting me. So putting her up and targeting her for somebody else is not good for your game. As much as you don't trust her, she will not target you. And so to have somebody in the game that won't target you and essentially put them up and send them out is just poor gameplay. Like let people that want her out go after her and then allows you to sneak by another week. And so like getting him to understand that, like I also needed to get him to understand that about Ian because he was like, I want to put up a winner and Ian needs to go up. And I was like, dude, Ian's not going to go after you. He'll go after other people. Stay away from Ian. And so like, that was a big aspect of, of that week. And then honestly, it was into the next week that I felt like I was like, yeah, it def that week was tough because I didn't want to step on Enzo's toes because he seemed to be getting very overwhelmed by how many people were bum rushing him about this HOH. And I felt like it, it opened up a door for Tyler and I'm glad that Enzo stayed away from it, which I think, I think it would have been bad all around. I think it would have okay. been bad all around. Cody, uh, I know you have to run. You got a ton of interviews to do tonight, but I just want to say congratulations again on uh, the great win, the dominant win, and uh, hope that we can uh, chat some more in the future, okay? Without a doubt, anytime. Okay. Yeah, great job, man. Thank All right, you. take care, Cody. Appreciate it. All right, here we are with the runner-up from uh, Big Brother 22, the Meow Meow, the great Enzo Palumbo. Enzo, how are you? What's up, bro? What's up, guys, man? How you doing? Nice to see you guys. Finally, I'm doing your show, right? Finally, man. Uh, you said you only do a five-minute podcast. We got 10 minutes with you. We got 10 minutes, right? Yeah, you, said, you, said, you were saying no podcasts on the feeds. I heard you. I heard you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because I thought I was getting cut. I thought I was getting Enzo mm. and third place. So I was like, that's it. I ain't talking to nobody. That's it. <laughs> so now, well, now you've got 50K. Are you now you're good talking to happy. podcasts? I will do, I will do yeah. podcasts. There now you go. Yeah, here's, here's Enzo. That's one podcast I will not listen to. Yeah, <laughs> that's you. <laughs> Anyway, Enzo, uh, congratulations that uh, you seem very happy that, uh, you know, you did not uh, go all the way, but you did not get third place. That's it. That's where I'm at right now, which I'm happy because I am proud of the way I played. I played a great game. I got to the end of this game. Finally, it stinks that I got second place, but. Cody, I said, is one of the best players to ever play this game. I'm telling you this right now. That kid is ferocious. He has a great social game. He's a comp beast. I, I'm, I'm telling you, he's one of the best to play this game, and he proved that this season, bro. What he's done, he had never got a vote casted on him. One nine nothing tonight. I've lost to one of the best, one of the best to play this game. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you think it was that uh, that prevented you from being able to, to win again? Do you think it was just like Cody was just unbeatable? Do, is there a point in the game that you feel like or a, a part of your strategy that you feel like uh, you could have improved on to, to get this uh, jury vote over him? Or uh, was was there nothing you could have done? I thought at the end, that's when I broke down. I thought if I would have beat him, maybe heads up in a competition. Yeah. I think maybe that could have been like, OK, at least now. He, he could have thrown competitions during the season, but when he had head-to-head -head against Cody and he took him out, then it's like, okay, now he came to play. And I took myself to the end. That could have maybe helped me out a, a lot. You know what I mean? I think that's why I broke down because I knew at that point, $500,000 gone because if Cody takes me, I'm losing to him. And I know if Nicole wins at third age, but she ain't taking me. So I say, here we go again, third place again. And that's what really bothered me at that point. Did you ever have an idea about how to potentially knock Cody out of the game? I was thinking of that. I was thinking of that because I was like, right here is the pivotal point during the triple eviction when I keep Nicole. I was like, I think if I get rid of Nicole here, now that's going to be a triple effect where Cody's probably going two weeks after that. Now, does that hurt my game? That's the thing I'm scared about. So I needed... I came to the grips where I was like, I need Cody in this game because 
I'm going to need him to win stuff for me at the end of this game because I, I Tyler was starting to come on. Memphis impressed the heck out of me, Memphis, man. And I was a little little weary of him. So I was like, I don't know if I could beat this guy at the end. So I'd rather, I'd rather be with Cody at the end because at least he could take these people out and I go to the end. Hopefully I can finagle the jury and win against him. And if my plan worked, but I got second place out of it. Yeah, well, mm-hmm. there were a lot of people, uh, especially in the early, early jury portion of the game, um, that, you know, especially Kevin, he had talked to you for a long time about, like, how much Cody sucks. Uh, and, like, if, you know, for a while it did seem like, oh, maybe the jury will be bitter. Uh, did that have, like, an influence over your sort of decision to stick with him? I was feeling out. I was I was feeling, I was like, yo, maybe Kevin got a little spat with uh, Cody. Uh, Devon, I wasn't really feeling him too much. I mean, there was people that he ruffled. Uh, you know, there was people that he got upset. So I was like, yo, maybe I got this. I think maybe I could have been a little better in my goodbyes. Maybe mm-hmm. I could have been a little, like, realer in my goodbyes. I felt like they all put it together because I said kind of like almost the same thing to mm-hmm. everybody in every goodbye. <laughs> but maybe I could have just been like, look, I had to do this. I had to get rid of you because of this, this and that. And I should have probably been like that more. But who knows at this point? I mean, Cody just played awesome, so... It could have been, I could have did this, could have did that. But I think at the end, Cody was going to get me, man. And so if you could have won that final uh, part of the HOH or, or the final three HOH, that would you have cut Cody or would you have gone to the end with him? I'm telling you, man, I love Cody. I'm indebted to this kid for the rest of my life. But at that moment, I was really thinking about taking a cold because I felt like I had no chance against Cody. I just felt yeah. I had like no chance. So if I do win that third HOH, there's more than a great chance that I take Nicole. I do. You have to. And I hate yeah. to say it because yeah. I love Cody, but yeah, I think I had I, I had a way better chance. I think I beat Nicole. I think I think Nicole didn't do enough. I know she had the target on the back because she was a champion, this and that. But I was ready to go in on her, man. If it was just me against her. Well, I, I mean, I just asked Devon, um, and she said basically the winning move was cutting Cody. So whoever did it would have won the game. That's what I was thinking too at the end. I was thinking I have, and I was like, I, that's why I, I broke down and cracked. I was like, that's it. I'm done. Like I'm done because mm-hmm. I know she wasn't taking me. And if I do go with Cody, five hundred thousand dollars is out. That's what I thought, and I was right. Yeah, uh, all season long I've been doing impressions of you, Enzo. I hope you don't mind, but uh, you, you say things like, "That's what I'm trying to say, yo. That's it. Come on, yo. That's it, yo. Come on." That's the best flattery, right? Right. That's the best flattery. People loved man. it. That's it. I loved it, man. What did what did, I want to ask you guys? What did you hate about my game or did not like about my game? Because I, I like I trust your opinions. I like yeah. your opinions. Well, I, I will tell you, uh, and you probably suspect this, that the biggest point of contention people have with your game was the triple eviction. They really Ooh, right. wanted you to make that move to take out Nicole. Um, yeah, I'm cool. actually one of the people that's kind of like, I get it. Like, it, like strategically to get you, you know, to no, the we, end. We get it, Enzo, it but we, we, we like big moves also. You know, yeah, we want exactly. to be want entertained. The out. Yeah. We want the champion out. Yeah, and I was thinking that, trust me, I was sitting there like, do I do this? Do I do this? But then uh, Dave wasn't winning anything, man. And I love Dave. He just wasn't winning anything. Keep her in that house. She's a target. She's a champion. People, that's something I can hide behind. Now that protects Cody and P- Cody protects me now with that too. So that's where I went with it. It worked. It got me to the end. Maybe that move, I win $500,000 because Cody probably gets a victim maybe two weeks later, three weeks later, you know what I mean? But it's not my fault that Christmas pumpkin drops out of the thing. It's <laughs> yeah. not my fault. Memphis's pumpkin drops out of it. <laughs> they were going after Cody and they were going after Nicole. So Cody could have been gone that week. Cause I was sitting, cause let's say that's the week when Nicole wins the POV. Mm-hmm. He's I'm, gone. I'm sitting next to him. Cody's gone. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I, it's not really my fault because the pumpkins, they dropped the pumpkins, not me. They dropped the pumpkin on and not me. Yeah, I, I do have a question about earlier in the game. Uh, if you're asking me about a move that I, that I was looking at, um, when Christmas won her HOH, um, you had kind of been working on her. Tyler had been working on her to try to get her to target Danny. Nicole had been working on her to try to get her to target Bailey. Now, when she won the HOH, she was kind of up in the air. You know, she could have gone either way. Uh, both mm-hmm. you and Tyler seemed to kind of take your foot off the pedal and when she told you like i'm gonna target bailey you were kind of like okay uh yeah i love bailey i love bailey but you're right i didn't trust her i didn't trust chris and i and i didn't trust danny at all right from the get-go man she's scared the lights out she just scared me man she was all over the place and so i was scared if i told christmas 
put up there. And mm -hmm. I did massage it through her a little bit. I massaged, I was thinking Danny's playing the whole house. I even said, Cody, Danny and Cody are playing the whole house with me. Just to show that I'm not really that close with Cody, but I am. But I put Danny in front. I was like, you know, Danny is playing this whole house. You know, why don't you put this one up? But I wasn't going to push it just in case mm -hmm. if Christmas went back. Because I didn't know if Christmas was with her or not at that point. This season was so fun because it was so messy in the beginning. I played messy in the beginning. It was just so fun, though. Because I was like, I'm getting back to it. I'm getting back to it. I don't know what's going on. I'm with an alliance with Davon, with Bailey. She's Bailey's put me on a spot with Danny. I was like, I heard rumblings. I don't like I was just put on a spot so many times to begin. I was like, there's no way I'm gonna survive this. There's no way. But it was so fun. It was so fun. All right. Uh Taryn, anything else for Enzo? I do have uh I have one I, I was very confused about this week. Tyler's on the block next to Ian. It seems like uh a lot of people are most of your alliance is leaning toward evicting Ian, but you keep sort of like piping in like uh hey yo, we we could get rid of Tyler, yo. Uh did you want to get rid of Tyler that week? Uh and if so, why? <laughs> I mean, I was thinking, I was like, I love Tyler. Uh, Tyler was not coming after me at that point, but Tyler's the type of player he will come after you at some point. You know what I mean? So I was like, Man, this is really juicy right now. He's a great player. I was like, this could be it. I had that deal with Ian, that final eight deal with him where we wouldn't go after each other. So I was like, all right, maybe I could buy some time with Ian. He won't come after me for another two, three weeks. I was like, this might be it. Maybe we get rid of Tyler right here. You know what I mean? So it was juicy. Uh, it was juicy, you know, but we went the other way with it. Okay. Enzo. So great to get to catch up. I hope that you reconsider about your, you know, no podcasts or short I podcasts. Will. I, will. I okay. got second place, so keep I'm, your minds, keep your options now. open. Okay, yes, I will. I definitely will. If you guys want to do what I do, but just let me give me give me some time to decompress. You got it. You got definitely it. Take your time. Okay. Definitely all right. Congratulations again, Enzo, on uh, getting so getting all the way to the end of the game. Uh, great job. Thank you, guys, bro. I appreciate okay. it. And best to you and the and and uh, your kids. Too. Moulin Bouget, too, right? Yes. Moulin Bouget, yeah. to her too. You're gonna be all, all right. right. I mean, without the air. I deflated her. She's now safe. And then when I get back to Jersey, she'll have Jersey air in her. Does so Tyler I, get shared custody? Uh, like what goes? Uh, uh, oh, he sorry. abandoned her. He <laughs> yeah. abandoned. I know. You, I know you got to run, yeah, Enzo. Sorry. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, bro. Bye. Thank you. All right, we are here with the winner of uh, Big Brother 18 and tonight's uh, third place finisher, Nicole Franzel. Nicole, how are you? I am doing okay. Okay, yeah, it was a rough night for for you, Nicole. That uh, I we said that that was a, a very uh, emotional reaction after Cody made the decision to take Enzo to the final two. How are you holding up uh, with that? It was only a couple hours ago. Yeah, I mean, I'm doing fine. <laughs> I am devastated, obviously. I saw myself sitting in the final two chairs. I never thought that anything else would ever happen. And uh, so I think I'm just like shocked and I'm just trying to understand it. And I guess from a game perspective, I do understand it. And I would be silly to it. Like, I admit that I thought about taking Enzo over Cody, but would I have done it? No. Yeah, yeah, we we were we were told by uh, Devon that uh, that you he f was faring much better against Enzo than against you. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, so it ultimately is the the correct decision here for uh, Cody. And I and I think um, you know for for what it's worth, you know, your question to Cody, how long was he planning to do that? None of us knew who he was going to take uh, heading into this finale. Um... Yeah, I didn't know if he was making me look like a fool for the past couple no, of weeks. No, no. in there, you know? So mm -hmm. I'm just like, how long? Because he's been playing this up real well because I had no idea. And, like, he would even say things like, Derek and I mm -hmm. um, don't play, like, you know, just, like, little things. Like, if I say, if I said anything, he'd be like, Derek wouldn't say that. I'm like, okay, so like, we're, like, we're, like, that close, okay? We're ride or die. So I just freaking did not, it went right over my head. I should have known. Well, do you think that your relationship with Cody can survive this? Do you think that you guys can move past this or this might be a deal breaker? <laughs> this is like the most popular question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think that it will definitely survive. Am I mad at him? Absolutely. But it's a, it's a game and I voted for him because he played a great game. <sighs> But I mean, are we going to be BFFs? No. <laughs> but, He's not invited to the wedding, right? <laughs> I don't know. That's it. <laughs> I just don't think that. I think it's just awkward. Things are awkward. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, did you have any uh, any any plans coming into the game? Uh, you know, you, you knew a couple of people, I think, coming into the game. Did you have anything planned out? No, and I thought that there was going to be like four or five winners. So my plan was, let's get in a winner's alliance and let's protect each other. There was one other winner, and I said, oh, crap, I'm in trouble. You nominate two people, and there's two winners. So I need to really uh, navigate this quite quickly. Nicole, uh, speaking of the, the other winner, when the week that Ian went up on the block that Danny was going through all the different people that she could potentially put up on to uh, the block, mm -hmm. uh, that we were a little surprised that you didn't push back harder with Danny to say like, hey, like, uh, you, you, no way, no how, do not put Ian up on the block. And uh, we know that, uh, you know, you, you would have liked to have seen him stay. But uh, that was there any particular reason why you didn't tell her, like, absolutely, this is my red line. Do not put Ian up on the block. I think that I was already, so Cody and Danny were freaked out on how much I wanted Ian to stay in the house, how close I was with him. He admitted it tonight. Cody and Danny were freaking planning it behind my back, trying to get rid of Ian because I was close to him and they didn't trust him. And I trusted him with every freaking bone of my body. Even when he threw me under the bus that one time, I was like, I forgive him. Like for some reason we had this connection. And when I looked at Danny and she said to me, he's going on the block. Like there was no ifs, ands, or buts. Danny is not somebody that you try to like negotiate with. I was never good at that with her. Cody, he could do it. He could kind of manipulate her and get her to do things. Me, if I said something, she would hold on to it, get mad at me and go tell Cody. And then I'm like, so for me, it wasn't worth it for my game to, and that wasn't gonna be in my final sp speech tonight. I realized then it wasn't worth me to completely stick my neck out for Ian because I would have shattered my whole alliance with the committee and it would have made Danny mad. I would have made Cody mad. And so I had to just take my loss there and it absolutely was, it killed, it killed a lot of, for my game because I was the only winner and I had a lot more work to do. And Ian was obviously someone I wanted in that house all the way. I would have loved to sit next to him in the end because we're mm. both winners. You got to vote for one of us. Yeah. Uh, you experienced a, a couple different uh, ultimate betrayals um, in the house. One with Ian, one with Danny. I imagine one tonight. Which which one was the the worst uh, ultimate betrayal? If there's an ultimate, ultimate betrayal, is tonight the, the ultimate? I think so. Okay. <laughs> I don't think you can top this. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like my heart definitely broke, that's for sure. And I was in this, like, the look on my face is probably so, like, because I had no idea. Did, did Cody give you, uh, after he won the competition, when, yeah. when the show came back on, you were already in tears a bit. Did, did, you, did he give you any indication that he was about to cut you and that's why you, you were crying? Yeah. He just said, I don't want to blindside you. I said, what? <laughs> yeah. You're going to cut me? I said, and I had to like walk down the stairs with my big heels and I was like shaking and I was like, oh, I would not have done this to you. And he's like, I know. And then he just walked to the diary room and I look at Enzo and I say, like, I'm believing. And he's like, really? I'm like, yes. <laughs> it was just such a freaking mess because I was like, Enzo had no idea either. He goes, mm -hmm. no, like, no, I think you're staying. I said, Enzo, no. I'm so mad. And I was like, well, I'm happy. I'm like, oh <laughs> yeah. Nicole, did you consider giving your vote to Enzo then in, you know, sort of like the, you know, uh, heat of everything that had just happened? The only reason I would have given my vote to Enzo, he did play an incredible game. He has the best social game I have ever witnessed. I witnessed it firsthand. And that man is incredible. But when it came down to the whole gameplay, um, my vote was always going to go to Cody. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so it would have been a completely bitter vote, and I'm just, I'm not that type of person to do that. Yeah. Uh, w would you go back and play a fourth time uh, with, with the, you know, you already have the most amount of days in the house. Um, are you willing to go and try try to get that second winner status again? No, I'm retired. I'm over. I, I can't do it anymore. My heart can't handle it, and I'm moving on to a different stage in my life. Um kids a family and we can watch big brother as a family but i'm not going to be playing anymore i just i can't handle it this season was 
I cried, as you can see, every freaking day. It was so hard. Like, I couldn't take my heart out of it. And it's because I loved so many people that I was in there with. And it was like gameplay was turning into something personal. And I just couldn't handle it. Like, I just want game to be game and then personal to be like, I want to stay out of that. But when it came to like even my relationship with Cody, my personal relationship with him was going to make me make a dumb game move and take him the final two. So I think I'm to the point of I'm getting like softer in my old age. I'm getting, I just, yeah, I can't do, I'm, long story short, I cannot handle it. <laughs> Is there one particular move that you look at this season that you feel like that you wish you could have gone, uh, had gone differently for you? At this point, I didn't win the season. Um, and I think Danny, I heard Danny wasn't very fond of my game. And Cody backstabbed me harder than anyone. So I would have just blown up everyone's game and told Dave on the truth. If I could go back and do that, I would freaking do it because yeah people didn't have my backs and i was protecting their backs they were begging me not to do it. it it took everything in my body for me to hold that in and like i was like needing to talk to somebody in there because i couldn't handle the pressure that i was feeling and i don't think people understand like how difficult that is and and i ultimately if it was just blowing up my game i would have freaking did it i don't care like I'll blow up my game. I always find a way around something, but blowing up everyone else's game added so much extra pressure and going back, I would have just freaking said it. I don't care. Yeah. How do you think things would have changed if, uh, if instead of a triple eviction, it was just a regular double eviction and you were on the block next to Danny for an entire week. And she has kind of maybe a week to realize that, uh Oh, maybe Cody's not as with me as I thought he was. Um, do you think that that changes things in any way for you? Oh, for sure. I think if she had a week to try to get out of sitting on the block next to me, she could have worked some magic. I think she would have, I would have saw her definitely throw me under the bus. And um, Enzo said that she was already doing that during the triple, um, which I, you don't know what's true and what's not, but I'm saying like, if she had a week to do that, oh, I don't know what would have happened. And I would have ha probably had a harder time staying in the house because being a winner on the block is a big deal and the fact that i survived the triple twice sitting on the block is a miracle my weak persona paid off okay that's the only thing that kept me there and my bonds with people i had in the house but yeah all right well nicole i know you have to run you have a ton of press that you're doing tonight we'll appreciate you making some time for us uh you know would love to chat some more anytime you're up for it in the future all the best to you and get home to victor and good luck with everything with the podcast and everything post big brother thank you so much you guys were great okay all right take care nicole bye bye Devon, how are you? Congratulations on being America's favorite house guest. I'm so excited, man. We made history tonight. I, I couldn't be more happier. Did you, did did you, you expect it at all? No, not at all, because we ain't never even been in the top three. So for me to find out that I was in the top two and next to Tyler, I was like, oh, he got this. Tyler always, he got it. He went everything, <laughs> he know, pops, he got it all. And so to know that I won, like, God is so good. I'm so grateful to everybody who voted, who campaigned for me. Like, what? This is for us. We did this. You know what I mean? I'm excited. Devon, what does it mean to you to be America's favorite house guest? It means the world to me because all season I talked a lot about, um, you know, winning this thing, not just for me, but for every African-American who has played this game and those aspiring to come in and play. And so I just wanted to make that history. And then when it didn't happen, I was like, okay, David going to do it. Then it didn't happen with David. And I'm like, oh my God, Kevin. And it didn't happen with Kevin. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. So to be able to check one of the boxes this season, it means the world to me. And it lets me know that the conversations I was having in the house and, you know, just, it wasn't in vain and I wasn't put here for nothing. You know, God has a purpose and plan for everything. So I'm just grateful that I was able to be a part of the plan. And you did, you did inspire a lot of people and your, your, your speech, uh, on eviction night was, uh, was very inspiring. A lot of people really loved it. Um, so uh, I, I think there's a lot to be proud of here. Thank you. Thank you. That makes me so happy because it's been a long time coming, man. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm grateful. How does it feel to be out of the house and out of the jury house, Devon? I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. It's 
been three months. I'm done. I feel good. You know, I'm going to go back. I haven't watched season 17 or 18, but I'm definitely going to watch this season in about a month or two. I mean, you don't have to. <laughs> I want to see it. I got okay. some questions I need to answer. So I'm going to go back and watch it. But, you know, it just... I don't know, man. It's done. It's over with. And I'm just glad that it's over. When I got evicted, Julie asked me how I felt. And I was like, relieved, child. I was ready to go. So I'm just, I'm glad it's over. Yeah. Um, on uh, Tonight on the finale, you uh, Julie asked you who you were thinking might come out of the house. And you said, well, Messy. if they're... If, Messy. <laughs> you said, if they're smart, it's Nicole. What did that mean? Well, what, how would Nicole have done if she was sitting in the final two? Well, here's the thing. If it were Nicole and Enzo, Nicole would have won. If it were Nicole and Cody, Cody would have won, but it wouldn't have been by a unanimous vote. Um, people were saying that as a winner, if she made it to the end, she deserved to win again. And so I'm like, all right, now, Cody, if you're smart, you're going to take Enzo so you can get this sweep. And so that's exactly what happened. So, yeah. There you go. Do you, do you know uh, who would have voted uh, which way if Nicole had been in there? I know Memphis kept saying he wanted her to win. Um, I'm pretty sure Christmas would have voted for her. Uh, Kevin was very adamant about voting for her, and I think David would have even voted for her too. So it definitely wouldn't have been a clean sweep. You you might have been that swing vote again. <laughs> would you have voted for her? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Davon, was it? Was it? Was, was, <laughs> <laughs> was it uh, there any consideration to potentially give the vote to Enzo? I know that in the jury segments, you talked a lot about how much you really liked Enzo. You wanted him to do it. Did you consider giving him a vote tonight? I wanted to, but at the same time, you know, Cody's resume was A1, and I feel like Enzo gave him that extra ammunition. Like, even if he wasn't going to get voted out, you still could have put him on the block. You were the HOA. You could have took that away from him. So you could have been the only person to say, I ain't never hit the block this season. You know what I'm saying? And Enzo's speech was all over the place. I mean, let's just be honest. <laughs> he was all over the place. But that's Enzo. That's why we love him, because he is who he is, you know? But Cody had everything down packed. And he made sure to let us know he learned his lesson from his previous season. You know, there are things that he didn't say in his speech against uh, Derek that he did say this time. So, you know, he learned his lesson. He played the game. He didn't care who he hurt. He cut the cold. So it was just like, give this man this check so we can go. We we were kind of thinking uh, if it was possible, if, if Enzo or Nicole, if either one of them had been the person to win the final three HOH and cut Cody, would that have been the winning move for them? Uh, like if Enzo had done it and cut Cody and taken Nicole, would he have beaten Nicole and vice versa? I believe so. That's what I was banking on. You know, all see, um, all in the jury portion. I've been saying that Cody has the cleanest resume. So whoever, because Christmas was included in this too at the time, because she was a part of the four. So whoever cut him and took him out of the running, that's the person I feel like did the the most shaking up that this season has seen. So yes, you know, so it, it, it could have been a possibility. Devon, we saw you in sort of like the center of that jury roundtable segment tonight. You were sort of like the de facto moderator. It seemed like, did it feel that way while you were out there? Um, absolutely, definitely, absolutely. And I'm like, okay, these people know I like to talk, and they put me right in the center, and they know I'm gonna talk. So it was it. It was interesting, you know? I felt like everything was going smooth, and then Christmas came out, and she started barking, and I was like, hold up, swole up, what's, what's happening right now? It got a little out of control, but it felt great. Like I told CBS, I said, hey, you ever need somebody to host, call your girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, <laughs> hey, you were a natural. I agree. Oh, we were just talking about that on the recap podcast. Uh, wow. I think, you know, uh, Dr. Will's great and all, but uh, maybe they should lose his number. Maybe they need to call Dave on. I ain't trying to take nobody job, child. I'm to take nobody job. <laughs> but I can quote her till he get tired. Then I'll take over. <laughs> Uh, Devon, when you left the house, could you envision yourself voting for Cody in the final two? No, not at all. I wanted 
Enzo to win hands down. There was no other option. It was Enzo. Um, no, that's a lie. It was Danny. I wanted Danny to win when I left. That was it was her or David, one of the two. I was rooting for both of them. And then when the triple hit and they all came rushing in, I was like, well, we in here now. So what do I do now? You know, then Tyler comes rushing in. And I'm like, well, Enzo, this is it. Like, you got to pull this thing in or it's going to be a problem. But then Cody started showing out. And then, you know, people come into the jury house and they're giving you information and information. And I'm like, this man been playing. So I'm not a hater. You know, you got to give credit where it's due. Yeah. Uh, what was your reaction when you first found out about uh, th that Nicole had been lying about the uh, the David vote? Oh, I was hurt. My feelings were genuinely hurt. And the reason being is because the history we had from Big Brother 18, you know, we came into this season and we made a pact that, yo, like, let's start fresh. You know what I'm saying? She has literally burned pretty much every female that she's competed against. I'm sorry. She's pretty much burned every female that she has competed against. And so it's like, yo, let's start fresh. Let's show that you can work with women and that I can trust you, you know? And so as we started to develop this friendship, when it came time for the vote, I expressed to her, I was like, yo, it's very important to me as an African-American woman. I don't want to be on this TV going to bat with David. I don't want that. We already having our own situation. I don't need you to add fuel to the fire. So it wasn't the fact that she flipped the vote. It wasn't the fact that she pinned it on David because from a strategic standpoint, I got that. It was the fact that she continued to encourage the feud between me and David. That's what really hurt my feelings because as my friend, you knew what that meant to me. So what was the purpose, you know? So my feelings were definitely hurt. Yeah, Davon, well, uh, we know you have to run. Just want to say congratulations again. We really hope that we have the chance to talk with you, with you some more in the future about everything uh, from this season and everything uh, with the challenge at some point down the road. So congratulations again on being America's Favorite House guest. Thank you so much. Thank you.